and it all begins here, you little prayer dog. What I do to you, the Darcy's gonna do to all of Colorado. So squeal all you want. No one's coming to save us. Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're gonna look at Wasteland 3. What is it? It's a strategic RPG set in a post-apocalyptic North America. If you've had your eye on the game for a while now, and you're wondering whether it's worth your time and money to pick up in its present state, well stick with me, I'm gonna go through it from every angle, and then you'll know. Okay, so like I mentioned in the intro, Wasteland 3 is a strategic turn-based RPG that takes place in a decimated post-apocalyptic North America. The game begins with the player taking control of the remaining members of the November team after being ambushed by a group of depraved bandits. Along the way, the player will form a base of operations that they can expand their squad, improve their weapons and any armor they have, recruit specialists to improve the base, and keep everyone healthy. If you've experienced any games like the XCOM series, this is all going to seem pretty familiar. The overarching goal and presentation of the game is extremely similar, but we're replacing aliens with post-nuclear bandits. As for the gameplay itself, once the player takes control of their raiders from the base into the wild world of the frozen North American states, it feels very similar to something like Divinity Original Sin, but obviously with a dramatically different setting. So if you're a fan of either of those type of games, then Wasteland 3 might be up your alley. If you want to know whether the game will suit your preferences and whether it's worth your time and money, well you're in the right place. Our MGN impressions have evolved, and today we're going to di dissect Wasteland from a variety of angles. We'll give each angle a score from 10, and then give you the final verdict. We're going to score Wasteland 3 on 1, being difficulty. Is the game challenging enough to maintain the player's interest through the entirety of the story without being so difficult that the game becomes inaccessible to new players? We'll see how In Exile Entertainment handles the difficulty with point 1. Moving on to point 2, that's appearance. This one is obviously pretty straightforward. How are the game's visuals? Do the environments look unique and crisp? Are the character models well crafted? Not only are we scoring appearance in the visuals, but also how demanding they are. Are there frame drops in heavily demanding areas of the game, or is it optimized well? We're going to cover a few points with sound, that's point three, including how the game handles sound effects, the soundtrack, its execution and whether it suits the game thematically, and finally voice acting. Compile all those points together, we get our overall score for point three, which is sound. Point four is story. In this genre, having a good story is imperative. If the game doesn't have a good narrative to base the gameplay on, well the gameplay itself is going to become very tired very quickly. So does In Exile manage to uh, interweave their gameplay with a good storytelling experience? Well, well, we'll see when we get the point 4 story. Point 5 is fun. Strip away all the finer points when reviewing the game, and are you having fun with Wasteland 3 when you play it? Because at the end of the day, that's the goal when sitting down to play a video game. Are you having fun? Are you enjoying the game? And has it been made interesting to play? That's point five, fun. Point six is price. Is the amount of time and enjoyment that you're going to get out of Wasteland 3 and the experience worth the amount of money that you have to spend? Is that in proportion? Is the game overpriced? Is it underpriced? Is it bang on? Well, if that's your chief interest, then stick around for point six. Okay, starting with difficulty, I'm going to give Wasteland 3, coincidentally, a three out of 10. If Wasteland 3 is your first Wasteland game, you're going to be in for a pretty rough time. I say this because the game does a poor job of explaining itself. If you're not already familiar with the game's mechanics and terminology, don't expect Wasteland 3 to be accommodating. For example, during the first character creation you will get to choose skills, perks and attributes for your two starting characters. This is where some explanation would be nice. Toaster repair is an option to invest in. Why is this something of significance and why should you spend your limited points on it? That's a great question, one that the game goes to absolutely no effort to explain during the character creation screen. Sure, you could google it and find out whether it's worth the points allocation, but you shouldn't have to. That information should be available at a glance within the game. 
There are a lot of examples of this happening throughout. Similarly, the difficulty options for Wasteland are also explained rather poorly. There are four options, the first two don't include friendly fire, and the more difficult two do. Apart from that, what sets the four apart is combat difficulty, which ascends the higher the difficulty that you select. What does combat difficulty mean? Well, that's extremely vague as well. Does that mean enemies have more health? Do they do more damage? Do they have more skills or a higher crit chance? Or is that all of the above? Or are some allocated for the higher difficulties and some aren't for the lower? Well, you're gonna have to Google that too because the information isn't readily available inside the game itself. It's for these poor explanations and steep learning curve, regardless of what difficulty that you choose to play on, that I can't help but score Wasteland 3 so poorly for difficulty. Simply put, the game feels pretty inaccessible if you're not already a big fan of the franchise. Moving on to point two, which is appearance. I'm going to give Wasteland 3 only a four out of 10 for the appearance. Wasteland 3 has a lot of variety in its visuals. Each faction has an obvious theme that really doesn't pop out or as being like out of place in the setting. And that's pretty high praise. I say it doesn't have a lot of variety. It has a lot of variety in the visuals but not so much in the environments. But the fact that, you know, nothing seems out of place is pretty high praise considering that there's such a variety of what's going on visually. To achieve coalescence between high-tech fiction technology and survival post-apocalyptic grunge isn't really an easy one to achieve, but similarly to the Fallout series, this is something that Wasteland 3 does well. Um, that's just about where my praise for the game's visuals end. Sure, everything fits, but that's just about it. The environments wherein the tactical turn-based fights take place are extremely similar to one another throughout the entirety of the game. There are basically two models, inside and out. Each map is only very, very slightly <laughs> varied in those two models. Between your opening few fights and in the first mission, I sincerely hope that you enjoy the environments because you're going to be looking at extremely similar ones throughout the entirety of the game. It just gets old pretty quick and saps away a fair bit of the fun. That's without mentioning the visual bugs. The most recent patch for Wasteland 3 is yesterday at the time of reading and writing this review, which means it's been out for a little while right now um, and it's, it's received constant updates. You'd think that this would be a good thing and mean that the game's bugs have been ironed out. You'd be wrong. Frequently throughout my playthrough there were visual bugs constant poor clipping, textures not loading in, or overlapping awkwardly, assets just simply not loading in. It's a bit of a mess to be honest, something that I would have expected to have been addressed some time ago, but it just hasn't. It's really jarring and it takes you out of the game and ruins any potential for immersion in the sort of copy and paste maps. So that's appearance and I'm giving it 4 from 10. The next point is sound. I'm going to give sound for Wasteland 3 a 5 from 10. The way that Wasteland 3 handles sound is pretty interesting. Obviously certain gameplay points have varying musical scores, but that doesn't mean that each fight you'll be listening to the same musical score. Certain significant fights have different music, and I really like the selections. They work thematically, they're well executed, and whilst there's nothing really outstanding musically to the game, the effort is there. So I'll give the studio credit for that. What I'm not really a huge fan of is the voice acting in Wasteland. Minor characters have extremely extensive and casted well voice acting, but the characters that you control and spend the vast majority of your game time with have extremely limited options for voices, and those options have very few voice lines. By the time you end a playthrough, you're going to be extremely familiar with every single voice line that a specific voice option has. It's pretty baffling to me, to be honest. Why go to the effort of giving a great voice acting performance to characters that come and go quite quickly, but not to the one that the player can create and will be around the longest. I don't really get that. It becomes pretty annoying quickly. What does that leave? Sound effects. I don't really have any complaints when it comes to sound effects. Sure, there's not really anything that I noticed and thought to myself, oh wow, they've done a great job, they've nailed that. But inversely, there's not also anything that hits the ear wrong. Guns sound like guns. Bashing sounds like something is getting bashed. Explosions sound explosion-y. It's all there, and it all sounds as it should. Alright. 
so a bit of a mixed bag for sound, 5 out of 10. The next point is story, and I'm giving story only 3 from 10. I mentioned in the introduction for this review that I thought a good story and good storytelling would be key to carrying Wasteland 3 to a good score overall. If you're going to have an RPG core, regardless of what the combat is like, whether it's got tactical elements or whatever, you need to have a good story, and I stand by that. The problem with Wasteland 3 is that it has a story, it has a lot of story, just none of it is particularly interesting. The crux of having a post-apocalyptic setting is having the motivation for everything to be the simple, we need resources to survive. And I'm afraid to say that the introduction for the game is exactly this cliche. It does absolutely nothing to pull you in from the start. If you want something that's going to be interesting from the opening cutscene, well, Wasteland 3 isn't it. When the player first starts the game, it's clear that the narrative is going to be a copy and paste from any number of media forms that have covered this subgenre. My interest took a dive off a cliff after the opening cutscene. But for the purpose of this review, I decided to stick it out to see whether there is any nuance or points of interest that separate the story of Wasteland 3 from the crowd. Spoiler alert, there isn't. There's just a lot more of the same. Like I mentioned, there's plenty of depth to the story, there's a lot of it, it's just all boring. That's why story gets 3 from 10. Second to last point is fun. Fun is only going to get a 2 from 10. Wasteland 3 starts off extremely slow. If you're familiar with what XCOM or Divinity has achieved, and you have expectations of the caliber of those games and what they've achieved, well then you're going to be bitterly disappointed. The game is extremely slow to start, and it doesn't really pick up. The pacing is just at a snail's crawl. I don't have an issue with the game introducing mechanics over time to ease the player into the experience, but that's not the point of Wasteland 3's pacing because those introductions never actually come. It's just slow for the point of being slow. You'd think with the level of depth there are in the characters that you can create, that there would be plenty of opportunities for these to matter, creating interesting and dynamic gameplay in response to that depth. Well, you'd be wrong. It does, doesn't come. Those interesting mechanics either take way too long to be introduced, or when they are introduced early, they're much less stimulating than perhaps the descriptions would have you believe. Those complaints aside, the game boils down to a very simple and just agonizingly painful pattern. Get a new mission, walk to the mission zone, shoot the bad guys, talk to the NPC. Rinse and repeat. There isn't a whole lot of variety to the missions. I know what you're thinking. Loot, the same can be said for a lot of games, some of which are great, and that is true. But what sets Wasteland and those games apart is that there is some fun and interest to be found in the pattern of those other games. The problem with Wasteland is the gameplay is boring, and that makes doing it over and over again an awful experience. Alright, moving on to the last point, which is price. I'm going to give the price score for Wasteland 3 only 3 from 10. Like I mentioned in the story portion of this review, there's plenty of it, so if we're simply scoring price on how long the game is going to last before you finish it, well then it'd be a big old check mark and be a much higher score than 3. The problem is that time isn't the only contributing factor into whether the game price is in proportion to the experience. The game might last you a long time, but you're not, get, you're not going to be enjoying the experience the whole time, and that's a big detractor. The game is currently sitting at $89.95 AUD on the Steam Store. Would I say it's worth that price? No, I would not. Not close. If you're considering picking up the game because it sounds good, I would say that the game sounds like it would be a really great experience if you're a fan of the genre, but it won't really live up to the expectations that those descriptions provide. Wait for a sale to pick it up, and at that, wait for an extremely good sale, because right now, it's extremely overpriced for how enjoyable the experience has the even potential for. Even with a heavy discount, the point still remains that no matter how cheap you can pick the game up for, there's probably always something else in your library that is more worthy of your time. That's why price gets a 3 from 10. What does that mean? That means our final verdict is overall a 3 from 10. Disappointing. And that's going to wrap things up for our comprehensive review of Wasteland 3. If you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made in the review, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.GG blog, our YouTube channel, the new MGN TV Twitter, or our Discord, all of which are available in the description of the video review. 
Thank you so much for checking out our review, Wasteland 3.